What's up everyone? This is my first video in a while. I've been on kind of a hiatus, uh, or the first video that does not pertain to pole dancing rather because I know I've posted like a few demos um, since I've been teaching classes I've had access to practice in the studio. But other than that I really haven't posted anything in a while. For those of you guys who follow me on Facebook, you know that I've been thrifting like crazy lately. I have always enjoyed like rooting through other people's trash and finding awesome stuff. So this is not like a new hobby but lately I've just had a lot of opportunities to kind of hit up some really awesome spots and find some awesome vintage and used pieces that I'm really excited to show you guys. So this is really going to be a two-parted video. The first part is just going to consist of useful tips that I would recommend for those of you who aren't really familiar with thrift stores um, or thrift store shopping. So kind of just useful tips for you guys. And the second part is going to be a mini haul of some items that I have purchased recently and then a couple things that I've purchased in the past just to kind of give you an idea of typically what I gravitate towards when I go to thrift stores. So before I start, I have like a couple things to say, and I know I usually end up rambling, so I'm going to try to keep it short. Number one, I ate like four airheads before I filmed this. So my tongue is like this gnarly shade of blue. It kind of matches my shirt. I feel like one of those kids who drinks a ton of Kool-Aid and has like a serious mustache, you know? Number two, I try to French braid my hair, which I have never been able to do in my life. And I think I can pretty much say that I failed. But I feel like if I uh, watch a couple tutorials on YouTube, maybe I will finally master it. Intricate braiding and stuff is something that I've always been awful at. The last thing I have to say, and these are all like tragedies, I know. I'm starting off this video by telling you like all of my recent downfalls. Um, the third and final thing that I have to say is that like an hour before I started filming this video, I somehow like fa <laughs> I face planted into the back of my trunk. And I was like getting my laundry out because I do my laundry at a laundromat and I don't know exactly what happened. But I literally like smashed my face on the back windshield of my car and I thought I broke my nose. Literally went into hysterics and I swear I am like the type of person who does not cry. Or I am the kind of person who doesn't cry when I am injured and I literally like broke into hysterical tears, went to my neighbor's house, who also is like one of my best friends, and I was like freaking out. I thought my nose was bleeding, but I was just crying and like snot was coming out of my face. It was so gross. And now I have this awful like bruise, and I feel like tomorrow it's going to look so much worse. It looks like a pimple, but I, I swear it is a traumatic wound. My nose is so swollen. I think you can probably see it. So... Try to disregard that while you're watching this video. Okay, so moving on to much more important things than my life, which is in shambles. I'm going to talk about a couple things that I always do when I go thrift store shopping. One of the first things I do is I always research uh, thrift stores and vintage stores um, wherever I'm shopping. So whether it's in my area or if I'm traveling, I will do a quick Google search to try to get some reviews of local thrift stores because it's really going to help you find the better places to shop. For the most part, I have found that uh, the internet is super helpful in determining the best spots uh, because most of the times people will leave reviews about stores, especially if they really like them. The most frustrating thing ever, which happens, is going to a thrift store, digging through piles and piles and racks and racks of junk and not finding anything that you see potential in. So it's just like very time consuming to look through all these things and not find one thing that you like or one thing that you see that has potential in some way. So that's why I really would recommend doing a little bit of research. Um, and that's not to say that there aren't thrift stores which are completely awesome and nobody has reviewed or nobody knows about because that is sometimes the case. But more than likely, if there's an awesome spot, somebody's at least going to have uh, recommended it or made a review about it. And that will really, really help you a lot. Another great way to find awesome thrift stores is really through word of mouth. I can't tell you how many spots um, I have found out about because other people have recommended them or told me about them. 
whenever someone recommends a thrift store or a vintage store to me, I always check it out because, you know, I really have nothing to lose. And if it ends up being bad, then it ends up being bad. But more than likely, that is not going to be the case. Okay, so I also want to talk about something that happened recently that was super disappointing. I was in Las Vegas because a lot of you guys know that recently I've been going back and forth um, to Vegas. And I've researched the best vintage uh, and the best thrift stores in the area, trying to find a spot to shop at on my last day. And I read all these amazing reviews for this place called The Attic, which is located in downtown Las Vegas in the Arts District. And people were just like raving about it. They were like, it's so great. You know, there's so much awesome stuff. So I made my friend drive me out there the last day I was there. And I anticipated like finding all kinds of stuff to take home with me. And it was awful. Um, first of all, it claimed to be the world's largest thrift store. So in my head, I'm like imagining it to be like 5 million floors, which it wasn't. And it was outrageously overpriced. Not to mention it was like super, it was full of literally like crap. So I am one of those people that hates to walk out empty handed and I could not find one thing to spend my money on. Aside from the fact that it was outrageous um, price wise, which I already said, I literally couldn't find anything that I even like remotely liked. And some of the stuff was straight up like dirty. And I hate to say that because um, of course I know it's used and whatever and I always of course wash my stuff before I wear it but the stuff there was straight up like filthy um my friend who drove me there has like never been to a thrift store in her life so I was really excited for her to see like what it was like and um how awesome it could be and she was like literally disgusted by the level of filth and just the lack of stuff and when I say lack of stuff I mean lack of crucial things because there was quite a good amount of stuff and that is exactly what it was so that was a bummer um so that's really the only time recently that my research has really let me down but i'm not going to uh, let it detract from future thrift store um excursions or what have you the second thing i want to talk about which i know i briefly just mentioned but i think it's really important that you always wash anything you buy from a thrift store or a vintage store before you're wearing it, if possible. So, of course, like, purses and clutches, you don't need to, like, swab it down with alcohol or anything like that. But I really would recommend washing um, any anything that you can wear. So, jackets, clothes, t-shirts, whatever. You don't know where it was, um, who wore it, whatever. And, you know, you just never know. So, just to be on the safe side, you want to... Make sure you wash everything before you wear it. One of the last things I want to talk about is what kind of things are suitable to buy from a thrift store. So I really don't draw the line um, too much as far as what is appropriate to buy from a thrift store, but I would recommend steering clear for the most part of the lingerie section for obvious sanitary reasons. And I know that Dolce Candy 87 who I'm sure like every one of you guys follows, um, she made a video recently about thrift store shopping, and she was talking about the same thing. Um, so, for the most part, uh, self-explanatory, like, do you really want to be wearing someone else's crusty underwear? Probably not. The one exception that I make for lingerie is, like, vintage and old school corsets and or bustiers. And the way I can really justify it is kind of like if it wasn't rubbing on someone's bare vagina, then maybe it is somehow okay to wear. No, but seriously, like uh, I think vintage kind of bustiers uh, are really awesome for photo shoots or for just kind of an awesome like accessory under a blazer or something like that. And you really can't find anything like that anymore. Like even uh, modern lingerie, which is kind of made to look retro and vintage still really doesn't have that vintage look and I just it's really hard to find things like that so if you find something like that from a thrift store and it's in good shape and it's not completely like destroyed and disgusting then I would say go ahead and buy it um and maybe you want to wash it twice before wearing it you know just to be on the safe side but I would say it's probably okay to purchase the last thing I want to talk about is jewelry because a lot of you guys already know that I am a huge fan of old and vintage jewelry. So, huge fan, love it, times a million, but there are a couple things that you want to be careful about. The first thing is cheap metals. 
Um, whenever I purchase a piece, I'm always very adamant about finding out what type of metal it is. Especially if it's going to be in your skin, like a pair of earrings, or rubbing a lot on your skin, like a ring. There are a couple methods um, of determining the metal which something is made of that are pretty reliable. The first method is to ask someone. If you go to a vintage store that is privately owned, like not like Salvation Army or something, a lot of times um, the owner or the person who is working there will be able to tell you, you know, what something is made of, especially if it's like a ring or a necklace or whatever. Um, the second way to tell is by looking at the inside of the piece of jewelry. So pieces that are made of sterling silver or metals that are more lucrative are usually marked um, and you can tell by the various markings what type of metal it is. So typically I try to find things that are sterling silver, um, especially like I said if they're rings or earrings I won't buy anything else because it's just going to irritate me and um, I'm, I'm really not going to be able to wear it because um, I have extremely sensitive skin. So the only time I'll make exceptions is if I'm buying like a necklace or a bracelet or something like and it's not going to affect me the same way. Um, but I really even had sometimes things like that bother me. Like if I buy something and it's like super cheap metal and it's rubbing against me, it'll give me a weird rash or something. And you just don't even want to risk that. So um, before spending money, it's just a good idea to kind of, you know, see what something is made of, especially with jewelry. Okay, so those are really my main suggestions to a successful thrift store shopping trip. Um, other than that, just really have fun with it, you know. Um, there's a lot of awesome stuff to be found at thrift stores and vintage stores, as I'm about to show you. Um, and yeah, I really enjoy doing it. I really enjoy just kind of digging through stuff, which is weird because I hate doing that at like department stores, especially like places like Nordstrom Rack. I hate digging. I don't know why. I I don't know why it's different, but it is. Like, if it's a thrift store though, I love it. And I love finding like that one piece that is just so amazing. And I'm like, who got rid of this? Um, okay. So now I'm gonna move on and show you guys some things that I got. And let me first say I have discovered the godfather of all thrift stores recently.